Thank you, Alex, for presenting. Let me do that once again by myself. My name is Vyacheslav Stepanyan. Uh, my supervisor is Arad Stepanyan, and the topic for my capstone project is the control design of controlled radiation pattern antenna for GNSS anti-jamming system. So GNSS is a constella constellation of satellites orbiting around the Earth, providing a signal usually with information about the positioning and timing. And the GNSS signal by itself contains information like the carrier frequency that the signal operates on, which is then modulated for the information, the PR encode, which represents uh, like uh, identification of the satellite, uh, the message itself, uh, and some environmental aspects like, like Doppler shift or atmospheric uh, delay, satellite clock error, etc. So for GNSS receiver to oper operate properly, it should be connected to three or more satellites uh, to gain the information about the position. But other than uh, the GNSS signals, uh, there may be some interferences to the GNSS receiver. First is the spoofing, which is also a GNSS signal intentionally sent to the receiver to uh, make it mis misposition uh, itself, which is a GNSS signal with the wrong information sent to the receiver. But a more common and problematic case is the jammer, uh, which is a high power signal, not specifically GNSS signal, it can be anything. Uh, it may be in a wide band of frequencies, which may affect the receiver to calculate the position incorrectly or uh, lose the lock with satellite at all. So how these problems are uh, solved. So we need to keep the good connection with the satellites and when any kind of interference signal, it may be jammer or just something else, some other signal of noise, uh, it should be ignored and it can be done in different phases of the receiver. It can be done in antenna, its electronics or uh, the uh, basement processing. So how the antenna addresses this issue? There are two cases of uh, antennas versus this fixed radiation pattern. Uh, it is uh, one element of array, for example, surrounded by a choke ring uh, that restricts the radiation pattern of antenna to avoid getting any signal from low elevations. And the second case is controlled radiation pattern. Uh, where multiple elements of antennas are uh, aligned uh, in such a way in one system so that uh, the radiation pattern and beam can be controlled to be directed uh, to the desired signal and avoid uh, the parts of undesirable jamming. So let's review a simple case uh, illustration of how it will work. Let's consider that we have a maritime with a GNSS receiver connected to six satellites and accidentally some airplane flies next to it, sending some inform unnecessary information. And the GNSS receiver adapts the radiation pattern in such a way that the uh, signal from the airplane is ignored. In other, way, in other words, we can say that we maintain a high gain towards the satellites and provide a high attenuation to the unnecessary signals. So let's get a little bit more mathematical about this. Uh, so the power of received signal depends on the power of transmitted signal itself, the gains of antennas from the receiver and transmitter, and the free space path loss, which depends on the di distance of receiver and transmitter and uh, the wavelength. So in this case, let's see, we have uh, an antenna as a receiver and satellite, let's consider their highest gains are directed to each other, so the connection is perfect. But at some point, a jammer appears, and even though it may be not directly uh, going to the highest gain of the antenna, uh, as the distance between the jammer would be much more, much less than the distance from the satellite, uh, the power of the jammer signal which be, will be higher. So how are we solving this problem? We adjust the radiation pattern, uh, moving this uh, in such a way that uh, the vector of the uh, jammer is falling into negative decibel of 
uh, antenna radiation pattern. So here it will be a negative number for the power of uh, the jammer and the power of received signal from the jammer will be reduced. So the GNSS antennas, uh, most important characteristic is the circular polarization and most of the GNSS antennas are uh, of a planar type and the circular polarization allows to avoid the problem of aligning the receiver and transmitter positions so that not depending on the angle uh, the transmitted signal is received completely and cross polarization problem is maximally avoided. So. Uh, the fundamental characteristics of Genesis antenna are the first and more, most important, I think, is the radiation pattern, uh, which decides the beam width, and so the directivity of antenna, how much it is directed to uh, the desired signal, and how much it can ignore uh, the signals coming from a lower elevation. The uh, actual ratio of polarization represents the ratio of horizontal and vertical aspects of the circular pattern as when we say the circular polarization it is not completely circular there may, may be some uh, uh, changes in vertical and horizontal and that may cause more uh, cross polarization. The bandwidth for GNSS is L L1 and L2 frequencies in Scope of this project, we consider the L1 frequency, which is 1.575 gigahertz. And the phase center uh, helps to understand the direction from which the uh, signal comes. And group delay represents the time it takes for the signal to go through the antenna. Finally, the design, uh, so this is my design of single patch, uh, which is a rectangular patch. Uh, the Good parts of the rectangular patch antenna is that it has a low profile. Oh, sorry, I forgot my antenna right there. It hit. May I take it? Uh, I'm sorry. Right here. So here is the antenna. And the good part of it is that it has a very low profile. It is cheap in its cost uh, and very lightweight. Uh, and it has a narrow bandwidth. We do not need a wide bandwidth for uh, GNSS signal at, uh, because there are certain frequencies that it operates in. Uh, it has not such a big gain, but in case of antennas, it gets uh, in, in case of arrays, it gets higher. And uh, it has a unidirectional pattern for one patch. <coughs> the calculations of the patch are done through some approximate uh, equations provided in antenna design books. Uh, These uh, equations provide a rough estimate that can give uh, predictable results, which is, the, and that size is after uh, fixed and moderated by simulation process. And to uh, just a regular rectangular patch has a linear polarization. So we add the perturbations in the angles to receive a circular polarization for a single patch. But now we have a patch which has a circular polarization and the directivity, but uh, the beam is still not controllable. For that, we create an array of antennas. So by uh, giving a phase difference or amplitude difference to each element of the array, we can control the beam, the direction of the beam. Uh, and the array can be in different designs. It can be linear, planar, or circular. But for this case, we, I chose the circular because in this case, I can have a circular polarization for the group of antennas as well. So during the simulations, I have aligned the uh, uh, bandwidth of the uh, so resonant frequencies of the antenna at 1.55 gigahertz uh, with a b uh, bandwidth width of 30 megahertz and one element had a beam width of 90 degrees but connecting together the directivity of antenna increased and the beam width became 57 to 63 degrees and finally the side lobe level which represents uh, how much we can ignore the uh, 
signals coming from the lower elevations is 32 decibel, which is the relation of main lobe to the lower lobe, back lobe. So uh, for testing the real antenna, uh, I connected it to a vector network analyzer to see its actual bandwidth and resonance frequency. And as you can see, the numbers are pretty close for simulation and test. Only difference is that uh, first, second and third channel got uh, a little bit shifted to the lower frequency. Uh, but these are sti still acceptable and operable frequencies for the L1 uh, band. So to conclude, we have an array antenna with controllable beam uh, operating at L1 frequency. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I, as you probably know, uh, antenna theory is black magic, um, really black magic. Yeah, they can talk yes. about the math, but when you make it, something else happens. Yes. Um, I have exactly. a question. Um, if you first turn on your, um, your GPS receiver and you get, let's say, two or three satellites, you're waiting for the fourth one, the jammer comes on. How will you know the difference? Uh, the first the time you turn it on, I know once it's running, I think your thing the will PRN work. code. Was that? Uh, so the satellite signal is represented by a PRN code. Uh, so the receivers usually have a PRN code generated in themselves, which is uh, pseudo random noise. And the PRN code is also inside the signal of the satellite. And that's how the, anten the receiver can differ the satellite from a satellite signal, GNSS signal, from any other uh, frequencies and signals. I probably shouldn't have said jammer. I probably should have sent a fake GPS signal. Spoofer. A spoofer. Spoofing. That's what I really mean. I didn't really mean jammer. I meant spoofer. Uh -huh. How would it know? Uh, I, I assume running, that I uh, in the scope of this project, I'm not uh, addressing the issue of spoofers. My uh, goal was uh, to uh, solve the problem of jammers. So uh, as I can imagine, uh, because I didn't research that part particularly, but understanding uh, and finding the difference between the spoofer and uh, GNSS satellite is not on the antenna part, but on the right. back end of uh, uh, back electronics of the receiver. Okay, I'll I'll keep the rest of my questions aside then. <laughs> okay. Have you actually uh, tested this with a live GN GPS receiver to uh, see uh, the uh, and, and compare with a regular uh, antenna, say for example on your smartphone and, and or uh, another GPS receiver and with your antenna? No, it was only tested on the vector network analyzer to find the uh, bandwidth of operation, no other tests. Okay, I, I'll try to.